Well, well, look who's here. How are you doing, silly? Still on the search? Is that so? Honestly, I find that a little hard to believe. But uh, I guess you know what you're doing, don't you? You always did. Come on, let's go inside. I prepared a little surprise. Or should I say a big one? I suppose that depends on how you look at it. <laughs> Da -da -da -da. Look who I dug out. It, and little sister. Aren't they beautiful? Aren't we beautiful? Aren't we beautiful? But I suppose what we dead people do doesn't concern you now, does it, my child? Because you are important now. Ha! Can you believe it? She's important. She is chosen. 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 But you know, I think you've forgotten something. Amidst all this ballyhoo of prophecies, cleansings, and beacons. That you are weak. You are pathetic. You are worthless. And you are weak. That's what you were back then. That's what you are now. And that's what you'll always be. Saving lives? You? Ridiculous! But then again, Maybe we do you wrong. So why don't you just tell us? Why you? Why should you, of all people, be the solution to the problem? Why should you be able to prevent something that has happened to mankind for thousands of years? You! That's right. You don't know. Because you are a stupid, dirty brat. A murdering, stupid brat and nothing else. <sighs> See? You did it again. You made me unhappy. You made me curse. And cursing is a sin. Don't you understand? I'm only trying to help you to see. This is not you, don't you understand? You are not yourself. And deep down inside, you know it as much as I do. You know it. You know it. So, tell me, silly. Why is it so hard for you to just let go? Your place is here, in the realm of the dead. So just, just let yourself fall. It only hurts in the beginning, you know? Then it's like falling asleep. Please, my child, we miss you so much. Little sister wants to play with you again. Play with you, play with you. And the two of us, we could go hunting again, like back in the old days. Find ourselves a nice deer, and then have a good, juicy piece of meat for dinner. Do you even listen to me? Hey, you're not supposed to leave yet. You're already here. So why don't you just stay? Please, child, stay with us. 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 Stay with me. Stay with me. Hey, can you hear me? Wake up. Bad dreams? Hmm. Anyway, it's over now. And we're lucky we woke up at all. That raft Korak put us on was about as seaworthy as a paper ship. But thank the sun, that fisherwoman over there took us in. She's headed for Duneville, and we should arrive soon. A couple of hours. That spell Korak's mute buddy put on you must have been quite a doozy. They felt the blow to the back of the head would suffice for me. Guess I was the lucky one. Yeah. That guy should really go easier on the bottle, if you ask me. But it seems that the thousands who follow him see things differently. As if the High Ones alone weren't threat enough. Now they have a self-proclaimed messiah to back them up. That's just peachy. Well, as I heard it, he thinks the cleansing is evolution. We become higher beings. 
We ascend to a new level of existence, so to speak. And he thinks the reason for the Red Madness in Enderal is that people still haven't learned the truth about the death of the Lightborn. They're still superstitious, so the sickness weeds them out. Natural selection. And yeah, it sounds absurd. I guess people always see what they want to see. I'm afraid so. According to the Fisherwoman, the first of Korak's battleships have already arrived near Duneville. It'll take them a while to get the rest of their fleet over here from Narim, but still. Enderol isn't ready for this. Not at all. Most guards haven't tried their weapons on anything other than training dummies. Or at the most, bandits. In other words, we're screwed. Well, I guess first of all, we should be grateful we made it out alive. I bet that if Korak would have known your role in all this, we'd be as dead as doornails by now. Once we arrive in Duneville, we should get back to Ark as soon as possible. I'm sure Arenthiel and the others have already written us off as dead. I suggest you ask the fisherwoman how much farther it is to the village. Well, I suppose first of all, I'll go get my pay. Regardless of what transpired, we fulfilled our mission. War is an entirely different story, and ending up beaten to a pulp with a damned warhammer certainly isn't on my priority list. Maybe. The Order might be powerful here in Enderal, but compared to Nerim's army, it's a joke. And maybe... <sighs> on the other hand, if we don't manage to stop the cleansing from happening, it won't make a difference if I'm here or on Calais. Oh, my. What did I get myself into? I feel like a bloody marionette in a goddamn play. You are, believe me. You know, there's one thing I just couldn't get out of my head since all this started. Does mankind deserve to be saved? I mean, have we as a species really made this world a better place? What have we accomplished apart from bloodbaths and wars in the name of the true gods or the right way to see things? And even now that we have a common enemy, we fail spectacularly to pull together. That's pathetic somehow, isn't it? Just pathetic. Heck, I sound like the biggest cynic alive. Let's stop here before it gets any worse. You're really curious, aren't you? But yes, there is something that troubles me, apart from the obvious. It's my sister. Well, I told you that we haven't talked much since... You know, a couple of moons before we met, I wanted to change that. And I went to see her at the League of the Apothecary in the Frostcliff Mountains. But she was gone, just like that. And no one knew where she went. It's been troubling me for quite some time now. It's probably nothing, but still, I'm worried. Ah, you're awake. How are you? No offense, but you look battered. Eh, don't thank me. I only did what every other path-abiding citizen would have done as well. Your friend, he told me about the Neramese. War, I have trouble believing it. Oh, how very reassuring to hear that. But I guess we're well off in Duneville. As long as they don't break through the cavern gate, there's no way they can get inside the town. Of course, that doesn't apply to the plantations and mines. <sighs> oh, blazes. Those bloody Naramese. Nothing is sacred to them anymore, is it? Anyway, I guess it's best if you rest a little more. As I said, you look as though you... I will do our best. I didn't think I'd ever say this, but right now I'd give a lot for the art guard to be here instead of these Doomville watchdogs. At least they know how to wage a war. <sighs> In any case, you should get back to the Sun Temple as soon as possible and show those Naramese bastards whose country this is. We will. An outlander. Isn't this nice? So, we should be back within range of the teleport rooms. I'm gonna head straight back to the temple. See you there. Oi! 
You again. How are you holding up? Everything all right? Yeah. 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 That should be it. Mm -hmm. Walk blessed, my lady. Sure, where to? So, Ira, good to see you. I heard about what happened on Half Moon Island. It's a wonder you and that mercenary made it back alive. But war, it just seems so unreal. How has it come to this? Now we not only have to fight these high ones, but also some fanatic who thinks he knows best? If they are, then maybe we were foolish to think that the Red Madness is the only weapon at their disposal. Tell me, Sa'ira, how is it possible that our beliefs about what's best for mankind are so different? Why are we so eager to be at each other's throats? Hmm. You know what I find so hard to understand? Why there are so few people who actually care. So few people who feel the need to change something like you and I do. <sighs> there are moments I just feel so powerless. As if we all know that if we keep going like this, we're headed for a catastrophe. But instead of changing course, we just stand by and watch. Do you know the feeling? I thought so. Whenever I think about it, I find it so hard not to get angry. Take all those upper city snobs with their colorful garments and exotic perfumes. They could put all that money to such good use if only they wanted to, but no, they don't. Because they just don't give a damn about the poor. Sometimes I imagine going down there, grabbing one of them by the collar and dragging them down into the undercity. And there I'd force them to see, just for once. But even that probably wouldn't help. I guess we only care about the things that directly affect us. Who fights against poverty if he's never suffered from it? Hmm. <sighs> and once again, you've had to listen to another deluge of my whining. I guess I'm just not a person for pleasantries. Sorry.
Hmm. Anyway, I need to make some preparations now. Master Bartar requested my support with something, and I shouldn't keep him waiting any longer. The notorious G. I was told you know. <laughs> you just wait and see. Yes. Fucking city. <sighs> The light fades away at the end of the day. Ta dum dum. But that's ridiculous. We have to at least try to negotiate. You know his demands. There's no basis for negotiation. He has not seen what we have seen the writings, the memories of the prophetess. If he just realized... My dams? Would rather My sirs? Away his calm that had been Shit. What took you so long? And where is Constantine? That's a long story. And those were his final words? I... I can't believe it. Simply That's another the victim of the High Ones. If we do not activate the beacon soon, he won't be the last. Oh, right. The beacon. If it's activated, we'll simply glow the Red Madness away, won't we? Or maybe we could, for once in all this, do something that actually makes sense and focus our resources on finding an alchemistical or thaumaturgial solution to this problem rather than trusting in a pile of scrap metal. Oh, by the prophet's ass, won't you just shut up for a minute? All day long you do nothing but babble, getting on our nerves, and nothing you ever say gets any closer to a fucking solution. So why don't you just shove off to one of the bathhouses? Go torture the washerwomen with your never-ending lamentations. That would be helpful for a change. You will take that back. Will I? Come here and make me. I'd be delighted. Blasphemy. Guard your this tongue, is blasphemy. wild mage, or... Or what? Are you gonna kill me? That's what you do best, you and your fucking order. Silence! You are angry, Lishari Pegast, and I understand why. But in the moment you let that anger destroy this alliance, Firespark's sacrifice will have been in vain. Is that what you want? I... Is that what you want? No. No, it isn't. Good. I am tired of this endless bickering. We have a responsibility, and we will fulfill it. Well said, Orantheo. And how exactly do you think we are going to do that? Without the sources, the beacon is as worthless as a heap of rusty iron. The Chroniclers are on it, and they will find the answer. Novice, tell Commander Aaron to join us. We need to plan the defense of the land. You, Prophetess, will speak to me as soon as you have recovered. Now, let us get to work. Please, Tilor. A Martine that can be praised, you've made it. Constantine, you didn't deserve this. They? It's just not fair. We have no choice. The beacon is all that we have. Yes, the beacon. Someone the beacon. is going to pay for the it. Beacon. I'll see we to don't that. Even know what this thing does. I... I have to talk to you as soon as possible. It's about the seal in that letter we found on the mercenaries in old Rationgrad. I believe I'm onto something. Their client is from Indoral. From Ark, to be more precise. Let's not talk here, though. I'll be in the first room upstairs, right at the end of the staircase. And hurry. Yes, see you there. Seriously. Well, that's just Stop how he is. Always talking rot. Of... 
Now look at that. It's the prodigy. Prophetess. Irrelevant. This madman, Koarek. He has completely reshuffled the cards. Now we not only have to deal with the High Ones, but also with him and his fanatics. Physically, yes. And we also know how it works now, and how it can put an end to the cycle. It is easier than we thought. The beacon was constructed for one thing, to destroy the High Ones. Once reconstructed, infused with energy and activated, lit, as the Pyrenees called it, it can banish the High Ones from this plane of existence. Immaterial, indeed. Essentially, they can be compared to the cold or to shadows. Omnipresent elements, yet we cannot touch them. Energy, if you will. However, there is a counterpart to each energy. Cold and fire, shadow and light the High Ones, and the Beacon. Yes. Imagine a torch driving away the darkness in the moment it is ignited. This is what the Beacon can do, except that the banishing will be permanent. Yes, as I said, it needs to be infused with energy before it can be... Once they are filled, the Beacon can be ignited and the High Ones will be undone once and for all. At least, if the old writings are true. Give the Arcanists some more time and I will let you know if there's any news. In the meantime, get equipped accordingly. Some of the Neremes have landed already, and outbreaks of the Red Madness become more and more frequent as we speak. Well, it's only fair to tell you. You've always been honest to me, so I will do the same. Have you ever heard of the Night of the Thousand Fires? Between 8,192 and 8,202, there was an underground movement in Kira called the Red Half Moon. They were brought into being by a group of intellectuals and philosophers who, under all the freedom of thought Saladrin granted them, started questioning the reign of the Golden Queen, and thus the Lightborn themselves. Saldrin saw himself as the god of knowledge, and accordingly, he reigned his country. In Kira, no opinion is forbidden. An appealing thought if you hear it for the first time. But a cunning people isn't easy to reign. There have been more revolts and riots in Kira than bones in a graveyard, and the Red Half Moon was the worst of them. Correct, just as my son did. But other than him, they fought like cowards. Terror, dust crystals planted in the marketplaces, and assassinations, you name it. If they killed innocents, they blamed the Golden Queen. And if they killed her soldiers, they celebrated themselves as liberators. However, they never succeeded in putting her down, and neither did she in destroying them. 
which is why the court turned to the Lightborn for help. A division of the Holy Order led by me, a young keeper of barely 30 winters. None to be taken seriously. You know, not everywhere is the Order as present as here on Enderal, or as it once was on Narim. In Kira, we were ridiculed. I saw the Kiranian keepers who served the Golden Queen. A bunch of decadent gluttons who had dedicated themselves to the court's banquets rather than to the will of the gods. They were pathetic. A moon after our arrival, we received an anonymous tip on where one of the half-moon spaces was supposed to be located. As we entered it, we were greeted by the township's elders, and the villagers themselves had gathered behind them. You should have seen how they stared at us, as if we were plunderers. I should have seen by then that something was wrong. That's what they wanted us to think, and they did a good job at that. A veiled person here, an archer on the rooftops there. I got nervous, because villagers or not, they bested us in numbers, and they had cattled us. Then a man seemed to charge at us, and I gave the order to draw weapons. It was just the spark they needed. <laughs> no, not a fight. A massacre. The villagers had pitchforks and shepherd staffs, and we had shadow steel swords, let alone the fact that we were trained warriors. I realized that I had made a mistake a split second after it started, but it was too late by then. My men, they slaughtered them all like pigs. At the end of the day, 300 people were dead. Well, what better proof of the Lightborn's cruelty is there than a division of keepers who, out of pure wickedness, slaughtered an entire village, women, children included. That distrust had turned into hatred, and nothing could have changed that, not even the Golden Queen's heralds. We set sail back to Enderal a week later, two years after that. I should have, yes. The Lightborn and the Grandmaster back at that time showed the compassion I wouldn't grant myself. But I learned one thing, and that is that I will never again let fears about my own life influence my decisions. That will never happen again. Yes. Good question. In their writing, the Pyrians say it has existed for aeons. Since this world exists, since the sea of eventualities exists, so too then does the cycle. It seems to be a part of existence, so to speak. The Pyrians didn't, and neither did the dozen civilizations that came before them. But as for what happened before that, our knowledge about the past is limited. All that matters for now is that the cycle threatens us, and that we have to stop it. The Fable Prodigy. I hope you can listen what they say.
Walk blessed. Madame? Are you in there? There are... Kivraj! What? Why? What have you done? Watch your tongue, Shari. Be glad that the blood is already dry, or else you'd be nothing but a pile of bones by now. <sighs> Forgive me. I... I just can't believe it. Yes, as I know, Nea. But she was a good woman. We both know that we're not involved in this. So please tell me why you and Lashari wanted to meet up here? Were the two of you... close? I wasn't aware Lashari liked women, too. <sighs> so why? What? Then... <sighs> then this bastard got wind of it. Oh, Kirash, Lashari, why the secrecy? Maybe the murderer has left a clue. We have to search. What's this? Let me see. Yes! This could be our clue. No, certainly not. But come to think about it, it doesn't really help us either. Oh, by the name of the sun, I will inform the order. Yes, yes, you do that. But come back to the temple as soon as you're finished, all right? Even though we've paid a high price for it. Good evening.
prodigy. The fabled prodigy. I hope you can live up to what I say about you. I really do. Prophetess. Ah, if it isn't the prophetess. What's wrong? You look troubled. I know. Shah Rim has already told me. I hardly knew her, but it's horrible. Yes. We need to find the yes. ones who did this, yes. and fast. Work. But you probably already know that. Thank Malfus we just had a breakthrough with the beacon. At least as far as the sockets go, yes. In the old tablets you found in old Dothugrad, there's talk of black embers, which are supposed to be some kind of energy supply for the machine. This is what we've been asking ourselves over the past few weeks. And then it fell like pelt from our eyes. The Pyreans were talking about the black pearls. They appeared for the first time in the Golden Era, and every self-important noble literally fought to get one in his possession. They changed owners for decades. Sometimes by violence, sometimes by gold. The whole thing only stopped when the owners took note of an... undesirable side effect, if you like. No. At least not with any known magic. And that's what's so strange about it. Nevertheless, all of their owners eventually shared the same fate. Countess Catua from Nerim, for example, whose castle burnt down to its foundations. According to a survivor of this tragedy, she was to blame for that. He claimed that he saw her the night it happened, laughing hysterically and dancing in the dining room and summoning waves of fire all around her. She was not previously known to have any magical talent in her. Correct. Plus, all of them eventually showed similar symptoms of delusion, like those possessed by the Red Madness do. A peculiar coincidence, if you ask me. Not quite. They... Those who owned a pearl tried to get rid of it, or lock it up somewhere safe. And eventually they fell into oblivion. Tell her your theory, Archmagister. Uh, yes, of course. <clears throat> we believe that the stones carry energy, pure, uncontrolled magic. And that the High Ones use them for their own purposes. Correct. The Pearl's magic make their owners powerful, but the High Ones befoul them, so to speak. Like a poisoned potion. I know it sounds odd, but the parallels are too striking to ignore. The red shimmer in the victim's eyes, the slow descent into madness, and ultimately this irrational, destructive act of violence. That's a question I've been asking myself since we first learned of the cycle. Who knows? Maybe they like for us to suffer. Or maybe they see us as we see ants, whose lives simply mean nothing. Or maybe the very concept of intentions is meaningless to them. That's what we think, yes. Nothing else in this world possesses that much raw power. Which is why you will find them for us. No, because we know what we are dealing with. Imagine them as a powerful, magical sword, which doesn't mean, however, that we will be careless with them. What we need is their energy, and once we have transferred that to the beacon, their shells will be useless to the High Ones. That's right, but we don't need all of them, Archmagister. I studied the history of the Pearls as a young arcanist, and I think that my notes might give you some hints as to where you should start looking. Give me until tomorrow. By then I will have prepared the relevant excerpts. Just come to me whenever you have questions. And hurry. I take it you have already noticed this, but Nerimi's troops are roaming our land and building outposts. 
And the red madness is also getting worse as we speak. Now go, Prophet. Yes. The sooner we find Hello. these stones, the better. I do? Thought I had gotten rid of it by now. But yes, I'm originally from Nirim. Just like you, as I've heard. Oh, I don't know. Probably because I don't have very fond memories of my time there. You know, if someone would have told you 20 years ago that one day I would be the Arch Magister of the Holy Order, you'd have probably laughed in his face. <laughs> it's absurd just to think of it. You know, I was a slave there. Yes, you see, I was born into a traveling group of Aeterna minstrels. I never got to know my father, though, and living that way was hard. So my mother eventually decided to burn all bridges behind us and start over. <sighs> Sorry, I'm, I'm babbling. I don't want to bother you with my boring stories. Well, after some days on the road, we met a traveling merchant who gave us a ride to the next village. A, a small one named Sildren in the Salathan forest. It seemed almost perfect at the beginning. One day, however, the Count simply stopped paying her. And, well, when she asked for the reason, he told her that we were his property from that moment on. Just like that. Why wouldn't it be? We were just a woman and a young son, and he owned both the land and the local guard. We had to serve this Creo, that was the Count's name, for nine years. It was horrible. Pure luck, I suppose. One day, an Endralean merchant and his escort passed through the village. They were on their way to Waverock to catch a ship from there. And just by coincidence, he saw me crushing some herbs I had found in the forest. That's what I did in the little spare time I had, you know. The Salathan forest is so incredibly rich with plants, you have no idea. What I didn't know was that I had found an entire sheaf of God's dung. That impressed the merchant so much that he simply bought me. He left her there. Believe me, what he did had nothing to do with mercy. He just saw that there was money to be made off of me. I cried and protested, of course. But two months later, our ship arrived in Ark, where he got infected with flesh maggots and died shortly thereafter. Luckily enough, he was a sublime. And since his relatives didn't know what to do with me once he was dead, they simply asked the order to grant me the novitiate, which they did. <laughs> By the left path, sounds crazy when I tell it like that. And it probably is. But back then, it just happened. I tried, but as you can imagine, my obligations made my options to do so very limited. Only recently, however, word reached me from a mercenary whom I sent over. According to him, Creo is dead, and his castle was deserted. But who knows if he just said that to appease me. I think when all of this is over, I might ask the Grand Master for permission to travel there myself. And then, who knows? <laughs> I'm sure a woman like you has better things to do than listen to the stories of a boring chronicler. I should probably get back to business. Forgive me. <laughs>